I grew up in the San Luis Valley and I'm a fifth generation resident of my family to live there. The first generation showed up in the mid 1800s and then um, the rest of them came from all over the world and so my family's been farming and ranching for, for a long time. One of the reasons I love living in the valley so much is the incredible closeness of the community and how your neighbors are kind of just an extension of your family. The, the San Luis Valley is a high mountain desert situated at an average elevation on the valley floor of about 7,600 feet in elevation. We only receive about seven inches of rainfall on average on the valley floor. And so we are so dependent on the Rio Grande and the Caneos River and all the other tributaries and rivers that flow into the valley to be able to grow crops and enjoy recreation and support fish and wildlife. So I've been with the Costilla County Conservancy District for eight years now. I am a mother to three beautiful daughters. Um, we are original settlers to Colorado. Uh, this is where Colorado began. We're very proud of our heritage. We teach our children to take care of our land and water. That's one of the most important things for our family to always have in the back of our minds. You know, the identity of the San Luis Valley is, it's based in a rural heritage. And so there are families that have been farming and ranching in the same place for over a hundred years. The people here measure how much water we're gonna have by the form of a bird an eagle on that mountain. And so everybody knows that as the snowpack is melting and dwindling, you know, just how much water is left to irrigate. I think people get very anxious when they see that that bird at the beginning of the spring is not as full as it should be. You don't see that snowfall anymore and it's, it's devastating because now we know how important that snowpack is, and it's just not there anymore. Right now, the greatest threat, of course, uh, is water. Uh, you know, we became overappropriated in the 70s, and at the time, you know, they probably didn't think we would have these uh, climate changes we've had, but but we have, and so now, um, we, you know, we've started mining our water system. The San Luis Valley Water Conservancy District was formed in 1949 to be the local sponsor for a reservoir project at Wagon Mill Gap. The local water users were divided on the reservoir project and so it was never built. It became evident that things were growing here in the valley and uh, augmentation water was needed to, to fulfill the needs of businesses that were being formed. And augmentation is the act of replacing the impact, which is also called injury, of that water use. And so if somebody wants to drill a new well, uh, they have to replace those impacts. And that goes back to the recognition that every drop of water in the Rio Grande Basin is spoken for. Both our, our surface water and our groundwater systems are fully appropriated. It was clear that there was a need for there to be a central entity providing augmentation water and so it was, it was a great fit. The Conservancy District came cruising out of dormancy and started purchasing water rights. Uh, people like Floyd Getz, who was the manager at the time, and then my grandfather, Dick Messick, who was the president of the board, really got the augmentation program off the ground. And I think it was 91, my dad got off the board and I replaced him on the board. It was apparent that there was numerous spots that needed to be uh, repaired on this river and rehabilitated. So we looked at the study and said, well, what now? How do we proceed? When my dad's generation started getting on the board, they took a, this incredible holistic look at the river and said, what's going on, what can we improve, and how can we make it better for all of, all of the entities, both 
human and animals that depend on the river. And, and my dad served on the district's board until I was able, fortunate enough to become the manager of the district. And then now my generation, um, as the manager of the district, I, I think that we're tasked with keeping the programs going, but also responding to an increased demand. There are more people here, there are more, uh, more demands on the water, but there's less of it. And that's our biggest challenge. Even though things are changing, one thing that has remained the same and one thing that ties us together is that the Conservancy District and the broader community have always made water work hard. The water management in the Asequia community, that's what we call our, our uh, watershed process. It is a shared process. There's a, what they call a mayordomo or a manager of each ditch. They take the water from the tributaries, um, the Culebra Creek, and they use the ditch Asequia system to share the water. As, um, as it flows down throughout the watershed. So it's important for our up and coming generations to know how important our Asequia system is because it's our livelihood. It provides for our crops, it provides for um, our drinking water. We are blessed to have um, a system that works for this area, um, sharing water is vital and there's not much of it to go around, so it's important for uh, the next generation to take care of it. I think the biggest thing is making connections with people like Heather and the other San Luis Valley uh, conservancies because we teach each other and we help each other to understand the problems that we're facing and we problem solve together. The San Luis Valley, no matter what issue, we just got to stay on top of that to make sure that we uh, maintain our water supply and not only uh, quantity but quality. And that's where the Rio Grande uh, River Restoration Project came in is, is to also help uh, on uh, water quality and efficiencies. The river floods or in drought times it, it drops and it provides all these services to the community beyond just water. It provides flood mitigation and clean water and all sorts of amazing ecosystem services. And so when you have the river, sections of the river that are degraded, those services aren't being provided and you're, you're seeing poor water quality and the river isn't meeting all the needs that it, it was um, before. Our mission is really to improve the health of the Rio Grande for all water users and for all who depend on it. So for the agricultural community, for the fish and wildlife and the environment, as well as for recreation in the, the broader community. It's not necessarily a conflict to be thinking about restoration ecology along with supporting our farmers because they go hand in hand. And that's, I think, one of the most beautiful things about the Rio Grande Hillwaters Restoration Project is seeing these multi-benefit projects. Our, our headwaters ecosystems that are so important for biodiversity and habitat and also recreation are kept intact and protected and also that water that flows down from the mountains and supplies both our cities and towns and our farmers and ranchers. But we also are facing new challenges. The current threat today we have is RWR, and that is a company wants to purchase water here in the San Luis Valley. They want to pump that water over the mountain to urban areas such as Colorado Springs, Denver, so that they can make a profit. The community has really rallied around fighting against these companies that are wanting to pull our water out of here. Uh, everything we do revolves around it and 
The river is the community. It makes us whole, I guess. It completes us. We, we wouldn't be able to live where we do without these rivers. And so it, it really ties together these towns and communities and villages and provides that backbone of our communities. That's a thread that runs through the valley, not just in the communities where I work, but everywhere. You see that over on the Caneos River and in the Culebra Basin down in San Luis. What ties us together is this incredible ethic and love for land and water and the desire to take care of it and shepherd it and steward it for, for the best uses now and for the next generation. Now there seems to be a shift where there's, there's more younger people coming into the fold and there's more women. And it's, it's really neat to be a part of and I am so appreciative of, of everyone's input. I am the first woman to represent the Rio Grande Basin on the Colorado Water Conservation Board. And I'm incredibly honored and humbled to get to fill that role. If our little community doesn't stand together and work together to protect our land and water, everything's lost. I am the very first woman board member on the Conservancy District. It's really important as a mother of three daughters to be a part of something so big in our community. The future health of the Rio Grande River I think is in good hands and with the vision that we have collectively I just see uh, bigger and better things. Uh, we've made so many great strides already, I just can't believe we can't make more. <laughs>